and you begin to say things into your life and at the moment you felt such faith and you believed it but then life has a way of hitting you in the forehead and you're thinking what in the world happened God did you change your mind God this isn't what I signed up for I come from Forest City North Carolina to preach the Johnson City no God has not changed his mind there's prophecies that have been preached and spoken into this atmosphere and things have transpired that seems the complete opposite of what God said. I come from the hill for hills of Carolina to tell you God ain't changed his mind. The prophecy is still right. The prophecy is still real. You've got something to hold on to. I come to tell somebody, don't you quit. Don't you leave that upper room on the ninth day and be the 121st person at the door. No, Johnson City's on the brink of a breakthrough, of a revival for the sake of this city, for the sake of Washington County. And no, I know it's easy when it feels like God's deserted you. I know it's easy when it feels like God's left you. It's easy to slip through the back door and go back to doing what you was doing before God called you. But I come with a word to Johnson City tonight. Stay in the room because the tenth day is coming. Pentecost is on the way. Pentecost to Washington County is on the way. If somebody believes it, you ought to clap your hands. I know you've been in a season. You've been I'm preaching to somebody. You've been in the trial of your life. Things look confusing. Nothing makes sense. I come to tell you, take a hold of that plow. And don't look back. Don't look back. Don't look back. Because what's ahead of you is better than what's behind. Somebody say with me the prophecy, the pause, and the Pentecost. I'm going to tell you another unpopular truth. Most of life is lived in the pause. And Brother Granger, maybe I'm not so spiritual. God don't talk to me all the time. The only way He talks to me most of the time is when I open that book and read a more sure word prophecy. There's some people, they go to the closet on Sunday morning and the Lord tells them what color shirt to wear. Oh Lord, I'm feeling too much at home right now. Tell them what to eat for breakfast. That's spiritual. Y'all be fasting, bud. I'm all about prayer. I'm working on the fasting business. <laughs> I'm teasing you. But most of life is lived in the in-between. The word spoken and the word fulfilled. It's living in the in-between. What you heard isn't what you see. Could you imagine being that messenger when Elijah's running the tread off his tires and saying, go and look, I hear a sound of abundance of rain. And six times that messenger comes back and says, I don't see one I owe of nothing. Because in the pause, you got to be able to hear it when you don't see it. Can I tell you what I've learned? Sometimes when the wind of opposition is smacking you right in the jaws and it's causing your cheeks to do that little shaky deal, and it I'm talking to somebody right now. And everything you put your hand to, it feels like it falls apart. And everything you say to sister so-and-so, they take it wrong. And you go, and you go to pay the bill. And your check bounces because you didn't have enough money in the bank. And you go down the road, and your, 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 your rotors stick with the caliber. And you get stuck on the side of the road. And you go on the job, and your boss cusses you out till a fly won't light on you. Folks, what do you do in the middle of that? You Carry and 
you wait because prophecy is going to be fulfilled. There's a reason. Here's the thing about prophecy. Now, if I get out of my lane, uh, you, you, he's right, I'm wrong. I'm young, green, and learning. I'm a rookie at this pastor stuff. I, I, I pastored two months and I'm like, man, that evangelist stuff's where it's at. <laughs> well, at least I ain't going to hell for lying. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Living in the in between. Living in the middle. I heard what you said, but I don't see what you're doing. Prophecy works like this. You see through a glass darkly. Which means, brother, you get the type, you get the shadow, you get the figure. It's like if you're looking into the mirror in the dark, you can see maybe the silhouette, but you can't see the facial features. You can't see the color of the shirt. You can't see the details of the eyebrows and the nose and the mouth and the crow's feet. And the wrinkles because we're wise. You don't see the mere details. That's why I worry about people that are just constant prophecy seekers. Because sometimes prophecy is right. It's biblical. But there's a fine line between the prophetic and the pathetic. And you see the outline. You see the figure. But you don't see the detail. And yes, God said he was going to restore a kingdom. And yes, there is going to come a day when he's going to sit on the throne of his father David. But while the disciples were waiting on God to restore what used to be, God had something for them that was better than what they ever New. Because God was going to bring a kingdom into this earth. And they weren't going to be resurrecting David and resurrecting Solomon and resurrecting his temple and making one of the seven wonders of the world all over again. But but it's words like the prophet Haggai saying the glory of the latter house shall be greater and the glory of the, the, the former house. And that, that, that was just a fancy way of saying uh, the, temp, the third temple that Jesus walks into is going to pale in comparison uh, uh, of the second temple. But what you got to realize, uh, what that third temple is going to have uh, is better than what the second temple had. Because the second temple just had the cloud of the Shekinah glory fill the building to where the priests uh, could minister. But in the third temple, there would be a high priest uh, that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. He's not going to show up in a cloud. He's going to show up in shoe leather. He's not... In other words, they got a word. They're living in the pause. And God ain't doing what they think He ought to be doing. And there's more people in this house that are living right there. God, this isn't what I signed up for. God, this ain't what I thought. But what they didn't realize, other lady, was Pentecost was better than the Solomon's temple. Because that same kind of glory that filled the temple was going to fill them. And he was going to fulfill his word, Emmanuel, God with us. Not just in a dimension of walking with him flesh and bone but in a dimension where he would get on the inside of you where the apostle would say it's in him we move and breathe and have our being. They was looking for something to be resurrected from the past when God said I can do better than that. When the day of Pentecost was fully come it filled all the house. There came a sound from heaven Holding tongues like as a fire Begin to set upon each of them And while they're looking for David While they're looking for Solomon While they're looking for political revolution They was got They had the opportunity of a lifetime Holy Ghost 
It don't be good to see folks pray for this little sister right here. Don't ever lose faith. Don't ever give up. Because signs will follow them that believe. Miracles will follow them that believe. I come to tell somebody, don't you slip out of the upper room on the ninth day and be the 121st person. You stand that upper room and say, I'm going to ride it out until, until something happens. Closer to me, you don't know what you think. The Bible does say, sir, that though they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. Can I tell you what that wait on the Lord doesn't mean? I can't wait till y'all get old. Y'all are going to have the most crooked thumbs. It's going to be hilarious. He's not saying wait on the Lord by sitting around and do nothing. That word wait there means this. Oh, we, we ain't getting it yet. When you go to Applebee's tonight and somebody walks up and says, Hi, my name is Sally, and I'm going to be your waitress tonight. What would you like to drink? They that wait upon the Lord is not a lazy word, a lethargic word, a boring word. It's a servitude. It's putting your hand to anything that a hand needs to be put on for the kingdom of God. And sometimes... It's hard to serve. After all, the prophet did say, they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. Now, I ain't too smart. I had to drive an hour to find an interstate where I grew up. So, you, you bear with this young man. If your strength needs to be renewed, that means at some point, in the service, strength got depleted. And there's people in this house that find yourself in that predicament. I need a renewal. Because waiting is harder than what it looks. Waiting is more difficult than what it seems. Waiting is it getting by easy? Sometimes waiting takes it out of you. And sometimes it's Tuesday nights when all you can do is come to church and it's everything you can do to lift your hands, much less stomp, stomp, stomp. Stomp on the devil. Well, I got a few real folk. You're tired, you're weary. And you're in the fight of your life. And God sent a young man to tell you. Pentecost is coming. What he spoke to you is real. God hasn't changed his mind. But you've got to understand once it gets here. It's going to be better than what you expected it to be. It's going to be different. It's going to change some things. But when it gets here, it's going to be better. The prophecies that's been spoken over East Wind are better than what we're told to hear. The dreams and the visions that some of these young people have had, aspirations and ambitions with call of God on their life. You hear me, young people? It's better than what you're expecting. But you've got to be able to live in repose. you got to be able to wait. When everybody else is jumping ship, can you stay and wait? 120 out of 500 is not the majority. But 
you can't get discouraged in the minority and throw everything that God ever promised you and told you. There's people in this house, God's promised you your babies were coming home. And it's been the fight of your life. Ever which way they can act up, it seems like they act up. They disrespect you. Well, hello, somebody. But I, can I tell you, if God gave you a promise, you keep praying those prayers. You keep waiting for God to do what He said He would do. I just don't see how it can happen good. Because when it does happen, only God can take the credit. Sometimes God lets things get out of our control. So we'll leave it in His control. So when it's all said and done, no flesh will glory in His presence. Can we stand right now all over the building? I understand this service has took a turn. But there's some wounds in this house that needs to be healed before they get infected. There's some things in this house that people have been struggling with and you ain't been telling anybody. And you need the help of the Holy Ghost tonight. I got good news for you. It's here. It's here. It's here. Do I have anybody that believes that with me? I, 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 I believe in a healer that can do more and heal your physical body. I believe he can heal your mind. I believe he can heal your emotions. I believe he can heal tormenting thoughts. Minds ravaged by the spirit of fear. There's some of you, you lay in your bed at night and you think of every bad scenario that could come out of the situation that you're in. There was an, he wasn't apostolic, but he was a cool dude. His name was Mark Twain. He said, life is known of many troubles, but most of which have never happened. Somebody needs the spirit of fear to turn loose of your mind tonight. And don't let it run you off. And don't let it cause you to lose your faith. Don't let the hounds of hell Calls you to run from the very thing God brought you to. If God brought you to it, it's cliche, but it's good anyhow. God will bring you through it. Can we lift our hands right now and let's just entertain the presence of God? Come well, on, it's a little quiet right now. I need somebody to lift your voice. In the name of Jesus Christ, I come against the spirit of weariness. I come against the spirit of fear. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke the spirit of lethargy that tries to get a hold of the young people. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke the lies of the adversary that's trying to talk them out of their Pentecost. Come on, can somebody pray with me? Come on, God hasn't changed his mind, East Wind. God hasn't changed his mind. What's ahead of you is better. It's better than the way it was spoken. It's better than the way it was perceived. It's better than what you dreamed. Come on. I believe there's unprecedented revival coming. I believe there's unprecedented revival want to shake these mountains. Come on. I, 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 my Lord, hallelujah. Come on, there's a fire that can be sparked in East Tennessee State University from this church. Come on, there's an outpouring of the Holy Ghost that's waiting, waiting. Oh, Shamakasataya, 